The other day, I was contacted by the overseas distributor of Paul Rubin's watercolor, and they asked me if I would like to review their products. So I was like, heck yes! They were kind enough to send me over a few of their products, so I will be doing a short series of reviews on them. As I said, these products were sent to me for free, but I am not being paid to make these videos, so all opinions I express are of my own, and you know I'm going to give you my honest review of these products. In this video, we are going to take a look at Paul Rubin's professional 24 watercolor set. I've seen this set over on Amazon and AliExpress, so I am really excited to be trying this out. Paul Rubin's The Brand is a Chinese brand, and you can see that when you receive the set, as it has lots of Chinese and English writing. This set claims to be an artist quality set of 24 pans that comes in a pretty baby pink metal tin and a beautiful box. It's the first set I've seen where the metal case is wrapped in a soft, beautiful cloth to protect it from scratching, which is a really nice touch. One thing I already love about these colours is the labels. I don't have much patience, and so I really hate it when each pan comes wrapped in layers of labels and plastics. Rubin's watercolour, on the other hand, have this handy-dandy label that is sticky on the sides, so no plastic wrapping. It makes the unwrapping process so much easier, because you only have the label to peel off, with the added bonus that you can just stick the sticky labels straight into your sketchbook with no glues required. Thumbs up, Rubens! All their colours contain ox gold, so it's not vegan friendly, but the colours will move through water really well. A quick thing about light fastness of these paints, I've seen a few reviews that said they couldn't find light fastness rating on these colours. It is actually on the pan labels, but you need to be able to read Chinese to know where it is. Fortunately, once you know where to look for, you'll be able to find the rating easily without being able to read Chinese. The light fastness rating is the line below the pigment code on the label. It seems that they have a light fastness rating scale out of 8, with 8 being the most light fast. Most colours in this set are 7 or 8, with only Madder Red, Prussian Blue and Payne's Grey being 6. I am actually really happy to see this because Prussian Blue is fugitive, yet many brands label it as light fast, whereas Rubens acknowledge at least that it is not as light fast as other colours. Let's take a moment to talk about money and comparing prices with other 24 color half pan set in metal tins. Rubin set on Amazon currently cost £32.99. In comparison, Schmincke's 24 half pan sets in metal case cost £107. Snellier's set is £81. Windsor Newton is £100. Rembrandt is £80, Old Holland is £134, and even Dale Rowney's artist quality is £72. So you can see how affordable Rubin's 24 colour set really is. It's half or even less than most other artist quality colours. So let's now take a look at each of the colours that you get in this set. First up, we have Lemon Yellow, and this has the pigment PY3. Next is Cadmium Yellow Medium, and it uses PY35. Then we have Indian Yellow, which is PY83. Cadmium Red Light, which has PR108. Scarlet, which is PR123, which is actually a perylene scarlet. Then a madder red, which uses the pigment PR177, so it's actually an antiquanodone red. Then we have violet, which uses PV19. 
Then we have Violet, which uses the pigment PV23. So it is actually a diaxazine violet. Cobalt Blue, which uses the pigment PB28. French Ultramarine, which uses the standard PB29. Then we have Sky Blue, which is PB36, which is actually a cerulean blue. Then we have C Blue, which is PB15 colon 3, so that is your phthalo blue green shade. Then we have Prussian Blue, which has the pigment PB27. Then we have Payne's Grey, and they spell the Payne's without the E, so that's not a typo on the sheet. And that is a mixture of PB15, PB29, and PBK9. Then we have Yellow Green, which is a mixture of PG36 and PY74. Then we have Tree Green, which is a combination of four pigments of PG36, PY12, PR101, and PW5. Next, we have Hooker's Green Brilliant, which is PG17, which is actually a chromium oxide green. Then we have Emerald Green Deep, which is PG7, and that is a phthalo green. Then we have Yellow Ochre, which is PY42. Then we have Pozzuli Red Ochre, which is PR101. Then we have Umber, which is a mixture of PR101 and PBR7. Then we have Burnt Sienna, and that says it's PB7, but I am assuming that's a typo, and it's actually a PBR7. Then we have Burnt Brown, which is again a PBR7. And finally, we have the Cold Black, which is the pigment PBK7. We are back, the paints have dried, and I am loving how bright these colors are. The paints were super easy to paint with, they re-wet really nicely, and they were really easy to make the gradations on all of this, and they are quite well resistant to cauliflowering which is great news because with some brands you just get cauliflowering everywhere and it's really really hard to control what's happening on the paper whereas these the paints went on smoothly and there were no streaking or whatsoever but overall looking at this palette i think it's a really really good palette that is well balanced in the range of colors so you get four yellows to orange colors four reds to violets and then you get five slash six of the blues. I say six for the blues because we have Payne's Grey, but it's a very, very blue grey. It's closer to like indigo rather than Payne's Grey that we imagine. And I think that's why it's over here with the blues rather than with the neutrals. So we get six blues. And then four greens, which is really nice because some sets you get like one green and that's just not useful. Then we get six browns and neutrals. I am of the opinion that you don't need black, so there's one color that I personally wouldn't put it into the set. However, let's look at the browns. The yellow ochre is great. The Pazuli red ochre is like a burnt sienna, but it's incredibly granulating. And I'm not quite sure how useful a heavily granulating red brown is going to be compared to having like a burnt sienna. The browns are usually used for natural settings like animals and landscapes and I can kind of see if you're trying to paint fur and stuff with that you're going to start getting into some trouble because of just how granulating this color is. Me personally I probably would pick burnt sienna over the puzzly red ochre but if you're into your heavily granulating colors this is gorgeous as well the umber i have to say is the only color that is disappointing in terms of color pay off 
all the other colors have really intense colors but the amber mm, was quite hard to get some color going onto the brush the burnt sienna is nice the burnt brown is a more muted more neutralized brown and i have to say again with this color i struggled a little bit in getting nice intense color out of them so i think the browns in terms of color selection and quality can be a bit of a surprise so if you do heavily rely on the neutrals and the browns i think looking at you denise then you might have a little bit of a problem getting on with this palette but for someone like me who is a magpie for the bright colors and just don't really use the browns or might use it a little bit but not huge amount this set is great because you have a wide range of brilliantly bright colors I also really like the fact that you get two kinds of warm yellows. One is a cadmium yellow medium, which is an opaque color. And then you get a Indian yellow, which is a transparent color. And that's really nice to be able to select between opaque and transparent color for such a critical color in the palette. So that is a really nice touch. The one thing that I am missing from this palette is like a quinacridone rose color so that would perhaps sit here so I would maybe take out a brown that I'm not using and put a quinacridone rose in here because I use that as my main primary red slash magenta color now let's take a look at Rubin's colors compared to some other brands and first we take a look at French Ultramarine by Rubens, which is here. And as you can see, it's a very smooth Ultramarine blue. And so we have Daniel Smith Ultramarine, Daniel Smith French Ultramarine, Holbein Ultramarine Deep and Sennelier's French Ultramarine. And as you can see with the intensity, I think the two Ultramarines here is stronger in intensity than the Rubens, but Rubens is a French Ultramarine. So let's look at the French Ultramarines. And I think it would be at least comparable, if not more intense. The French Ultramarine by Daniel Smith is weaker than the Rubens one. So that's a really good sign of quality. French Ultramarine being the more finer and less granulating one, I think Rubens have it spot on. It is very, very light on the granulation. So if you are looking for an Ultramarine blue that doesn't granulate so much, then Rubens French Ultramarine is a really, really good option for you. It's comparable with the Sennelier's French Ultramarine, but I would say that it's even less granulating than the French Ultramarine. Next, we have Payne's Grey by Rubens. This color is very interesting in that it's incredibly blue. I have pulled up two Payne's Greys that I have, Holbein and Sennelier. I also pulled up the Daniel Smith Payne's Blue Grey, and as the name suggests, it is a bluer grey than the Payne's Grey. However, when you look at it like this, you can totally see that this is more of a blue than a grey, or even a blue grey. And I painted Indigo and in Danthrone here for you. This one's by Holbein and this one is the Daniel Smith in Danthrone. And you can see that in terms of hue, it's a lot closer to these guys than these guys. And so I would say that Rubens Payne's Grey is more of a mixture between in Danthrone and a traditional Payne's Grey. So just watch out for the fact that the Payne's Grey is a lot bluer than I think most people would expect. Then we have Violet, and I find that the quality of the paints really start to show up when you look at the more intense colors. And I would say that this is applicable here. We have Rubens one here, Daniel Smith's Carvers of Violet here, and then Kors Diazo Purple, Sennelius Dioxazine Purple. And one issue I have with the Rubens, if I pull this up, can you see that the Rubens one, which is this one, has more pockets of white showing through than the Daniel Smith or the Core or the Sennelier? They all have pockets of white showing through because Diazo Purple is such an intense color, but I think Rubens one seems 
the more fuzzier, more muted colour than the rest. And that's to be expected because Rubens is so much cheaper than any of these colours. And so it's not like shoulder to shoulder with the top, top brands, but I have to say that it's also very close to it. It's not that far down and it's certainly not as far down as their price range. Like this is at least half the price of these guys and this is not half the quality of these guys. I would say it's more like 80% there. So when you're looking at value for money, I think for the price, it's still a great color. And then finally, I want to look at Mada Red. This is Rubin's Mada Red, which is an antiquanone red. And I have pulled out a wide range of reds. And I want to first show you the Queen Rose by Daniel Smith, which is a color I would like to have in this palette. In addition, because Rubin's Mada Red is definitely like a red red, whereas I like to have a Queen Rose slash magenta color here and you can see that the two colors are very different indeed. For comparison of this cool red, I have Holbein's Rose Madder, which is quite similar, but this one is much more intense. Then I have Daniel Smith's Carmine, which used to be like my favorite cool red red, but now I'm like, oh, Ruben's one is brighter and it's more intense and it's like proper pure red whereas the Daniel Smith Carmine has a hint of pink in it. Then I have Daniel Smith Antiquanone Red which these two are the same pigment and so they look pretty similar. And then I have Rose Matter Permanent by Daniel Smith here which is a lot pinker. And then Holbein's Pyro Rubin which is the closest colour Holbein has to the Antiquanone Red. And I have to say I'm a big fan of this Rubens Mada Red. It is really nice. It goes on really smoothly, as you can see. No streaking like you have on the Daniel Smith or the Rose Mada by Daniel Smith over here. It's also not as prone to color flying as the Pyro Rubin by Holbein. And so I think this is a really good red to have. And in fact, I'm gonna see if I can get tube version of this red to have in my collection because it's just such a good, cool red that is really strong and intense. So that was Paul Rubin's Professional 24 Watercolor Set. I think this is a fantastic value for money, very versatile and ideal to use as a travel set. The paint quality, although it's not quite shoulder to shoulder with the high top brands like Daniel Smith, it is definitely high up there, maybe along with brands like Snellier and Schmincke, and this is so much more affordable than either of those brands. I'm super grateful that Rubens sent this set to me because it really, really has surprised me in how good a quality this paint is. The paint goes on so smoothly, it makes my life so much easier. A huge thank you to the Port Rubens distributor for sending me this set. I am so pleasantly surprised and it has definitely made my day to receive this set. So what did you think of this set? Do let me know in the comments down below. If this video was interesting to you, then please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye!